Well, hello, parents, and welcome back to another one of our Faith at Home podcasts geared specifically towards you and helping you in, uh, encourage faith at home. Uh, last week, we talked about creating a Sunday routine, uh, creating some good rhythms in your Sunday mornings to help your kids uh, maybe continue to engage in God's Word, but also to kind of bring ourselves, uh, our hearts and our minds to uh, prepare for worship together and to join us then for our 10, uh, 10 a.m. service online. And so if you missed last week's episode and want to hear more about that, we have the links available on our Faith at Home webpage where you can go back and view all of our previous podcasts, both video and audio uh, online. So I encourage you to do that if you haven't. But I know uh, that when you first begin to use this uh, curri curriculum, we are also providing for your families, for both kids and youth. Uh, it can kind of feel overwhelming, especially the kids curriculum. And so I want to take this time to offer some ideas on how best to use the weekly kids and youth curriculum at home. And so before we jump into that, though, I think it's important for us to acknowledge the whole point of why we as parents are, are even taking the time and the energy and maybe even a little frustration, depending on how your morning is going. Uh, why are we even doing these lessons? Well, it's important for us to maybe consider the fact that the goal should not be simply to get through it. Uh, when we try to get through anything, we know that the end result potentially leaves us more stressed. Uh, we don't really retain much of what we learned, and we eventually feel like we wasted our time and we'll probably just kind of stop doing it altogether. I learned this lesson very well, actually, when I was doing my seminary studies. Uh, I kind of had that get it done mode uh, when you get assigned all of this book work, all, you know, all the reading assignments, all the papers to write, uh, and I just had in my mode to get things done. And I worked very hard and did get everything done. But it was just poor quality. My papers were poor. Uh, you know, I felt like I wasn't remembering much from uh, my readings, and I just, I just felt like I wasn't gaining the kind of uh, the knowledge and wisdom that I was hoping to get from seminary. And so I decided to start slowing down my pace. Uh, I focused on the things that mattered most or was most helpful. I even chose to not complete some assignments for the sake of others that seemed more important. And to be honest, I found that the quality of my study significantly improved. I, I was remembering so much more and my papers, my, the quality of my papers significantly improved. And, and even my grades got better because I was turning in better quality stuff, even in spite of some of the assignments not being turned in. And so uh, all that to say, please don't make your goal with this kids and youth curriculum to simply get through it. That goal might actually make the experience worse and you might actually end up just giving up at some point. I think that we have our kids participate in these faith building experiences, uh, especially ones like these, with the goal that as parents, we want to create a future conversation. I mean, youth ministries for years has had this as their mindset, like everything they tend to do at like youth group is pointing towards an opportunity to, for a small group discussion, right? Uh, to process what the kids heard, what they've learned, uh, and what it might mean for them in, in kind of an application conversation, right? And so I would encourage parents to use uh, both of these kids and youth lessons with that goal in mind. Where are the opportunities to have a conversation about this uh, with my kid? And, you know, from the conversations I've had with parents over the years, I know some of you after hearing that probably started to freak out a little bit. You know, I once had a parent share with me that she just, she didn't know how to talk about this, you know, these faith topics with their kids at length or, or even know how to respond to tough questions that their kids were asking. And I want to quickly give you just a little encouragement to let you know that it is okay to not have all the answers. It's okay to say, you know, son, that's a great question. I don't really know, to be honest. But let me also mention that it's a great opportunity to explore answers to that question with your kid. Don't, don't just let it disappear with, I don't know, but instead come up with a, a plan to figure out how you're going to answer those questions. I love starting with asking the kid what they think right there. Like, you know, that's a great question. I'm not quite sure. What, what do you think? Right? Because now you're starting a conversation with the kid. 
right? And then it may be do a little research on your own, do some Google searching. Uh, maybe you have some books or some resources that you have access to that might be helpful uh, to, to look it up. Know that Mark and I uh, are always here to be a resource to you as parents to, to help you answer questions and share ideas on how to talk about these topics with your kids. And then after you've done your research, bring that conversation back up. Hey, you know, the other day you mentioned this question. Well, guess what I learned? Uh, and then, you know, ju jump into the conversation. But all that to say, make your goal about creating these opportunities to talk about these things. And don't be afraid of where that conversation might be because the honest truth is Sticky Faith tells us your input really does influence your kids' faith, right? Uh, and so how best can you use this curriculum to create the conversations? Uh, as we jump in here, I just want to quick mention that I'm going to be sharing my screen as to, to look at the curriculum we have. Uh, if you're listening to the audio podcast, I'll do my best to describe where I'm, what I'm looking at, but you can always go back uh, and find our video version and fast forward to these parts that are most impactful for your family, right? So let's first jump into our youth lessons, simply because I feel like those might be the easiest to navigate. And so uh, when you jump on on our Faith at Home website, and I'm going to share my screen here. So here we go, Faith at Home. Um, so uh, when you when you scroll down to the bottom, you can see the first part. The first section is these podcasts that you're listening to. But when you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you're going to see uh, a section geared towards our youth lessons. And so uh, with here, you're going to see a short three to four minute video along with the list of reflection questions. There's, sometimes there's going to be a, uh, we're kind of crafting these as we go. So there might be four, uh, there might be seven, not quite sure, but there's going to be a, a, a few different questions for the students to reflect on. And so what I would have you do is ha encourage your kids to actually take some time, uh, like I said, even at like 930 on Sunday morning before the service, Go watch this video, this three to four minute video. We try to make them engage and we try to have some sort of activity uh, that would help, uh, uh, you know, kind of engage them in that. And then spend some time reflecting on those questions. And then, uh, you know, especially if your kid likes to journal, encourage them to journal their answers to these questions, right? Uh, but have them spend time doing that. But then as a parent, again, if the goal is to create opportunities for conversations, I would encourage you uh, to uh, maybe look for three or four different questions. So here's what I would do. Start with an observation question, something along the lines of like, hey, so, so what was the lesson about? Or, or what stood out to you from what you heard, right? An opportunity for them to kind of regurgitate what they just listened to. But then, look at this list of questions and pick maybe one or two that you think would best create a conversation with your kid. We recognize that every kid is different as well as your relationship with each one of your kids might also be different. Uh, you know, some kids, you may have this deep relationship that you, your kid will tell you anything about their life. And others of you, you're just excited if they say more than a grunt, right? <laughs> um, uh, the reality is some of these questions, you know, for example, uh, looking down here, uh, you know, what is holding you back? Like, you know, asking your kids questions like, tell me your deepest sin isn't going to get anywhere in that conversation. Pretty obvious, right? Uh, but what I would encourage you is to look for those questions that would engage them. Some kids uh, tend to be intellectuals. And so like you'll see here on this lesson, uh, the third question down, read Romans 10, 9 through 10. What does this say about someone being saved? So ask them that question. What'd you, what'd you read in that? What stood out to you? How'd you answer that question? Um, you could even maybe craft your own questions to kind of say, well, how does that apply to maybe your friend group or when you're at school or on your sports team, right? To kind of change their context, to help them think outside of just the immediate, like I'm doing this lesson and, and kind of broader into how their life might actually uh, apply there. And so I, I would encourage you to look for one, two questions that you think, and it might be different questions for different, you know, if you have multiple kids in the youth group, uh, it might be different questions for different kids, right? You're, you're looking for that opportunity to create a conversation. So you do, you do that. And then the last question I would always encourage you to ask is some sort of focusing on the next step. So now that you've learned all this, what are you going to do about it? Uh, I often try to think about our faith journeys as a series of steps that we are taking as we, as we continue to, to draw ourselves closer to Jesus. 
And so ask yourself questions uh, that may need to change. Uh, you know, like what do you need to change in your life? What do we need to change about our family's life in order for you to embrace God's calling here to do X, Y, Z, right? Uh, so use that as an opportunity to then think about what it, what's going to happen now. So all that to say, uh, just to kind of summarize where we are, have them watch the, the short video, spend some time reflecting on that questions, and then you, as the parent, create opportunities to talk with them. Uh, you know, ask an observing question, what did you hear? Ask one or two reflection questions, and then ask a next step question. And hopefully you're gonna find some opportunities to create deeper discussions with your middle schooler or high schooler uh, on these lessons. So that is the youth lesson. And so now let's turn our attention uh, towards the kids lessons and for these kids lessons you're gonna find them halfway down on that faith at home web page and access to this section is actually going to be password protected because we are using curriculum that is copyrighted and so we send the password out every week in our Friday emails as a reminder here's the password and the curriculum we're using is actually from the Gospel Project. Our family has, uh, the Bechtolds, have actually been engaged with this great curriculum for years. Uh, we know that the key theme of Scripture is pointing towards our Messiah, Jesus Christ. Like, you see it in the creation story, you see it in, in, in promises made to Abraham, uh, in the exile, and even after Jesus, you see this kind of going back to pointing towards our hope found in Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what this curriculum curriculum does. The, the, the curriculum as a whole cycles through all of the stories of the Bible with each lesson pointing towards the hope we find in Jesus. So for example, this last Sunday, we were in the book of 1 Kings, looking at chapters 6 through 8, where Solomon is building the temple. And at the, if you were to look at the curriculum, uh, at the end of the Bible story section, it, it tells us uh, kind of the Christ connection, which says that the temple was a place where God was with his people. The people could go there to make sacrifices and to worship God. And today, when we trust in Jesus, Jesus is with us wherever we go. We can look to him for our forgiveness and our help. And so for us, that had an opportunity for Anna and I to talk with our girls about how uh, the temple in this Old Testament place, uh, in Old Testament, was a place where God was with his people. But now when we trust in Jesus, God dwells within us. And so we got to talk about that with them. And we even talked about how even uh, gathering for our church worship services is different than when they gathered uh, at the temple because God is always with us. Whereas, you know, at the temple, it was more God was there with the people. And so that just created more opportunities for more conversations. So all that to say, this is, this is a curriculum we've been using with our Discovery Hour classes, and so we're going to continue throughout the summer months to provide uh, the next kind of series in these lessons. And so how do you use these kids' lessons well? So I'm going to share my screen again here. There we go. And so I'm going to scroll up to the kids' lesson section. So when you click that link, and then you're going to log in uh, with the password. And it's going to take you to kind of a basic page where you're going to see a couple different things here. Uh, there's going to be a, a couple of links to the lesson plans uh, geared towards specific grade age levels. You've got the pre-K version, you've got K through three, and then you've got four through six, right? And so there's a couple of different lessons there. And then at the bottom, you're going to see a link to watch the lesson video. So this is what I would do. I have downloaded the K through three lesson here. And you're going to see here uh, the first, uh, this is where it's going to actually probably get a little overwhelming, which is really why I want you to see what I'm seeing here. Uh, so when you open the lesson, uh, I want you to know that we are giving you the entire lesson plan. And that's intentional because we know uh, that every kid is different. Some kids engage well with crafty activities, other kids uh, like games that have a purpose and, and so forth. And so we want to provide you with everything so you can discern what would best engage with your kids. And again, remember the goal isn't to get through it. And honestly, there's a lot of stuff here to get through. And so if that's your goal, you're going to feel overwhelmed uh, very quickly. So instead of just trying to get through this lesson, make your goal about finding options that will create conversations with your kid, right? So in each curriculum, there's essentially four key sections. You're going to see here, uh, the first few pages are typically uh, for you parents to kind of give you a summary overview, uh, kind of just what is this lesson talking about? 
And then it even uh, tells you the Bible story, kind of a summarized version excuse me, of what, uh, what you see uh, in these chapters that you're kind of exploring in the lesson plan, right? And so become familiar, just kind of read through that to help kind of get you prepared for where you're going in the lesson. Uh, and like I said, even at the bottom, there's that Christ connection piece that I, that I read to you at the bottom of the Bible story uh, section. But then after you've gotten familiar with that, this is what I would do. Jump to the introduce the story section and find one activity or one craft or one of these things that would best connect with your kids, right? Uh, you'll see uh, they have a couple of different activities. The lesson pages should be included at the end of this PDF. Uh, they've got some session starters, uh, different options. And so I would encourage you to pick one that would help kind of open up, kind of get your kids thinking about this lesson. And then use the verbiage that, you know, they, you know, for example here, they tell you to say this. Use the verbiage to kind of help you transition. And then what you would do then is under the teach of the session story, that's where I would go back to this faith at home and, and page and just play the video, right? They did a good job. The curriculum has done a good job of providing this like engaging kids lesson video uh, to tell the story well, and even kind of break down the ending kind of to the main point of Christ, right? So watch the video. It's, it's a video that sadly, uh, you know, you, we watched it on an iPad on the floor. We all laid on the floor and we watched it on our iPad. You could also, watch it from a computer or uh, from a phone. Sadly, they don't give you the option to cast it to a TV uh, just because we have, we have to give it to you based on our OneDrive account, uh, which doesn't include that. So uh, just find a way to kind of watch it together. But then after the video, what I would then have you do, I encourage you to do is jump down to uh, the apply the story section, which you can see here on the screen. Uh, there it is. So you either the apply the story section, or if you're using the preschooler uh, curriculum, it's going to be labeled experience the story because, you know, our preschoolers probably aren't going to create too much conversation. Uh, and so the experience the story section is more of a, how do you take what, what you just saw and maybe put some experience to it. And so what I would do is go to these sections. Uh, and here again, they offer a ton of different activities, but I want to encourage you to focus even more specifically on the questions that are kind of scattered throughout this section, because this is going to be your best place to find questions to remember what the story talked about with your kid and to talk about its meaning. Uh, so pick a few of the activities or a few even of the discussion questions that will best help create a conversation with your kid. You know your kid best uh, and, and maybe an activity is going to be the best way to engage that conversation with your kid. Uh, and so I would encourage you to, to look through it and find one more activity or one or two questions uh, that you can take after watching the video and create a conversation with your kid. Uh, and, and then you can wrap up with some time and prayer uh, and give the, uh, you know, some of the lessons actually give you a creative like prayer option, which you are happily welcome to do, or you can simply just kind of pray about what you talked about, pray about what you learned from the lesson. And so as you use those kids, I hope that kids lesson, I hope that kind of gives you a little clarity. Just as you, as you look through it, pick one opening activity from that introduced section, watch the video, and then pick another activity or, or find some of the questions that will help create a conversation from the experience or, or from the apply section, right? And so that's it. Don't feel like you need to make it complicated and always, again, always make the goal about finding opportunities to create conversations. And when you make it part of a rhythm to your routines, I think you're going to find that they're going to begin to open up more and more as this kind of becomes the new norm for your family. And that's why rhythms help because it creates normalcy and even sets some expectations of, of what it should look like. So again, if you have any questions, if you need any help with any of this, don't hesitate to reach out to me and I promise I will do whatever I can to help equip you to continue to instill faith at home, right? And so I hope you all have a great rest of your week and we'll see you right back here for another episode of our parent podcast. We'll talk to you later.